Yo, what's up everybody? Thanks for watching, I appreciate everybody coming back to the channel. In today's episode, it's gonna be on a Toyota Highlander. We have a rail or all glue pull on this damage. We have several creases and multiple dents within this um, panel. <clears throat> and what happened was the customer went to the local home improvement store, bought a six inch by six inch, eight foot long log and a post. And when he was pulling it off his roof rack, it slid off the roof rack and created a few creases and um, dents and dings within the panel. And uh, it's all glue pull on this Toyota Highlander. And I'll tell you, I hate doing these kind of repairs. I just hate glue pulling and blending. They hurt my shoulder. And it was about maybe three, four hours worth of repair. And on this particular one, I quoted the customer. And it was uh, $544 for one of the creases and $433 for the other crease. In the photographs I saw, I didn't see the other dents or dings. And the customer asked if we could do like an 80% repair on, um, for a lower price. And uh, I told him, well, we can do that. And here's the price. And it was less than the price I quoted him for the full, uh, full complete 100% repair, which I'm glad he did because this thing kicked my butt at an 80% repair. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys have things like this in the future, this is a technique you can use. Sell it at a lower quality for a less price. And if the customer's happy with that quality, bam, you're good to go. I've used this technique up quite a few in the past. Um, I don't always recommend it because I like to get them as close to perfect as I can. That way I can have my name on that always. But you know what, it's not about me. It's about satisfying your customer. And that's all you guys have to do. Satisfy your customer. Once you do that, you'll get paid. And I promise you this customer left us a raving review. He said we made his day. He's so glad he called us. He's glad he scheduled the repair with us. So at the end of the day, the customer was happy. And um, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. And before we get started with the video, I want to show you a couple new, new tools I bought from the Anson tool truck that came to my area because of hell. I bought this beautiful B&D fender, what is it called? Panel slash fender pliers. I've wanted this because I did a video in the past, a few weeks ago on a BMW fender, and this would have came in handy for that. And I went on their website, B&D and Anson's, and they were all sold out. So I just got lucky he showed up and I was able to purchase this bad boy. Not only did I get this, I got the bridge that it comes with. So if you have a larger dent within the panel, you can just take this little piece off here and you can put this on here and extend it out, which allows you to get um, on the outside edge of the dent and push a lot of metal up. Not only did I purchase that, but I also purchased that another kit that came with the fendal fender pliers and it is the fender blowout tool it's the large one and then the small one these things are beautiful man i mean at first i was trying to figure out like how do they work what do you do it for i mean what's the purpose i didn't understand it until i studied it for a few minutes and finally figured it out and um all this does is goes on the back side of the panel and it pushes the dent out that's pretty much all it does push a large percentage of the dent near the edge of the panel and I mean it's beautiful and now they have videos on YouTube about how to use it which I didn't see originally and I also bought the Stucky hole pliers they repair holes whenever you put your um, tool inside of a hood or a tail light hole or something like that and you damage it and bend it well this tool here allows you to get in there and um, tighten those holes back up and flatten them out flatten the holes back straight Sh hole straighteners is what they're called so these are stucky hole straighteners so this was about $75 if I remember correctly I bought the, this kit here and they were about $195 for the kit otherwise they're like 120 each and this was I want to say 250 maybe 300 I'm not 100% don't quote me on that price 
And then the bridge, I believe the bridge was like 120. I really don't know. I just bought the whole thing off the truck. And so, yeah, I'm very excited to use those things on my next uh, fender dip near the edge so I can get a lot of that metal out quickly as possible and super clean. And that's the thing, clean and fast. Let's get straight into it. We're at home, that's what we do. We're a mobile company. We come to the customer's location, whether that's work or office. And convenience for them, that's what it's all about. If you can make it as convenient as possible for the customer and make it easy and have them let do less tasks, it just it's just it's a win. I mean, you're pro almost providing a luxury service, coming out to their home, answering the phones. That's really not a big deal, but coming to their home, repairing the damage, removing it, without them having to leave their home, especially now during COVID, it's huge, absolutely huge. So on this one, I brought out my quick bench. You can get this from Dentcraft. They're around $400, if I remember correctly. And they adjust from regular height all the way up to, I think, three feet. Boom, the knockers tip wide, the D-cup. I got this off the Anson tool truck the other day. And I mean, I'm so glad I got it on this repair. It does, I don't really show you how well it works, but it is incredible. Look at that polish on that thing. Absolutely incredible tip. It's $50, I highly recommend them. All those um, edgy tips are expensive, but oof, they're worth every bit of that $50. Look how tight that crown is. Very tight. And near the edge right there, it's pinched, and I, was, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get that out. I don't even know how to get that out. If you do, let me know in the comments so I can figure it out. And I don't enjoy this type of damage, obviously. I'm, I've never been a, a fan of doing rails. I always partner with somebody if I can, and they do the rails, and I do the top panels when it comes to doing hail damage. But I do it all the time. It just I just prefer not to do rails, if possible. Just because I don't enjoy the blending aspect and the glue pulling, I don't enjoy that. Um, some people love it. Most people I talk to, they'd much rather do that. But look, there's a few uh, scratches and in right there at the edge and I notified the customer and I was really concerned about glue pulling that area because I didn't want to pull the paint but I, I still did and I, I had to really back off because I felt like it was starting to separate a little bit where it's cracked or chipped not chipped but cracked it started to kind of lift I said whoa I had to stop and I told the customer this is the best I'm gonna get it without pulling paint I mean and he was he was it, he, he was so excited about the repair. I was blown away. But look, this is what it looks like with the light on there. And you can see how sharp those dents are from the, that six by six log just sliding across it. I mean, it. there's quite a few other little dents within there, but those two right there are the main ones, and the only ones that he saw. Honestly, he didn't see the other ones. So I just fixed all of them for the same price. I didn't care. Um, we already agreed on the thing, on the price that, uh, for the 80% repair, and that was all that mattered. It's all about the customer. So, first thing I do, especially when it's raining or cold, I always heat the panel up, and I, I use my torch quite a bit, as you guys know if you follow my videos in the past. And what that does, it removes any condensation from the panel, and gets it to where your tabs and your glue stick much better. Also, what it does is allows the paint to warm up so it uh, mitigates any kind of risk as far as paint pulling off the panel. And that's why I heat it up. And there's a lot of guys who heat it up. They use torches, they use heat guns, whatever you're comfortable with. I, I love the torch. It's quick and easy. And I'm not afraid to put heat on that panel. And I, I usually do uh, alcohol, denatured alcohol. I just always use denatured alcohol. I feel like it cleans better and, and the glue sticks better and it gets the contaminants or the glue off the panel much easier in my opinion. Try it out and see if you like it. If not, stick with what works for you. And this flat tip right here, oh my gosh. What I should have done was uh, spread that dent out much wider and shallow it out before I did any glue pulling and I didn't do that. Um, next time I know I'll do that for sure. It was such a sharp dent, I should have just spread it way out at the beginning. 
And that's what I did after a few times pulling it and everything like that. I just spread it out probably, I'd say six inches this way, close to where the camera's at, and then probably another eight inches to the other side of where the light is. And I just knocked the uh, body line down quite a bit to, just to shallow that uh, body line out because it was sharp right there where that tab's at. Very sharp. I couldn't get it up at all. And it just kicked my butt. I'm not gonna lie. So what I'm doing here is glue pulling and I would recommend uh, if they're really sharp like this, just go ahead and shallow it out before you start glue pulling. Don't do this method I'm doing here, but sometimes I do this quite a bit and it works for almost always, but when they're sharp like this, it doesn't work very well. So I learned my lesson and I hate shallowing dents out before I uh, start pushing or glue pulling just because of the amount of time involved in it. But there are instances like this, for example, where that's necessary. I got the black ice oval tab, crease tab, and I'm starting that off right there on that body line. And I'm using the old school black plague crease tab. Yeah, as you can tell, not much really happened there. It was just, it just didn't really do much. And most of the action where I move a lot of that metal and during this repair, I, I wasn't able to film it because I kept getting phone calls and emails. So I had to answer my, I always have to answer my phone and emails during repairs. So it, it keeps me from filming. And I use my phone instead of my GoPros during this repair because my GoPro batteries were dead. And I left them at home. So I had to stick with the phone on this repair. <clears throat> yeah, if you guys like doing rails, let me know in the comments below. Maybe we can uh, tag team and you can do the rails and I'll do the top panels. If you guys hate doing rails, hey, just give me a shout out say, hey, I'm with you, Dennis. I'll know what you mean. This tab here I got like four years ago. Rarely do I use it, maybe six years ago. Um, I was just trying it out in the shallower dent near the top edge up here to get a lot of that out. Cause it doesn't pull as hard as some of them and I didn't want a really hard pull. So. Yeah, I mean, as you can tell, it, they're not moving. I really need to uh, remove some of those crowns. The one right there that's in your face, that one really needs to get knocked down right now. Hindsight 2020. I was really hoping not to have to go that route, but I'm looking at it now. It definitely needs that happening. Knock those crowns out, release that tension. Because it's not moving. It's just definitely not moving. And if I would have done that, the repair probably would have came out much better than it did much sooner. But what I do from here, I take that uh, brand new tip I bought and I, I beat those crowns probably for close to like 20 minutes. I mean, 20 minutes of just hardcore beating the, the crowns down and blending it, blending it out and making it softer so that uh, the sharp sharpness would shallow out. Which once you get that sharpness shallowed out, you can put a tab on there, a crease tab, and just pull it inside out. Almost, it's so beautiful when, you, when you're able to do that. It makes you feel good. But uh, um, unfortunately, you're not gonna see that in the video because I didn't film that part of the repair. Yeah, hey, let me know in the video if uh, these are the type of repairs you guys are attempting uh, where you're working at. Or maybe you say, hey, you know what? I'm not there yet, I don't wanna attempt this repair. Let me send it to somebody else. Let me send it to a body shop. Yeah, let me know. Uh, don't be afraid. Throw a comment in there. I'll be honest with you. In the past, I would have been like, nope, I'm not fixing that. And now I'm trying to fix everything. Whether I can fix it 100% or not, I'm still going to attempt because that's what's going to make you better as a technician in the long run. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would recommend. 
but make sure you let your customer know, hey, 80% repair or 90% repair, whatever you're comfortable with, you're gonna get to. So this is about, I guess, like halfway there. And you can see those sharp, still really sharp creases in there. I have to, I had to really beat that body line down and spread it out so I can get that pit right there in the middle of that body line. Cause it was so sharp, there's no way I was getting anything out. Um, yeah, I even tried taking the grab panel out, see if I can stick a, a tool in there and it was double, it was triple paneled. I knew it was, I just wanted to hope and pray I can get maybe a little tiny hole, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do that. And grab panel took me like two minutes to take off. It was no big deal. I've done so many of those headliners. So here it is again after spreading it out a little bit and trying to get that bottom edge of the damage out near the um, window frame. It was That was so hard to get. It was not moving. I don't know. What would you guys do right there where that pinch is at the bottom of the rail? What would you do to get that out completely? Easily. So here it is after... Um, more blending and shallowing out the panel and more blue pulling with crease tabs and locka triangle tabs and the locka square tabs. It's, uh, i say still like maybe 65% there. There's a lot of blending and glue pulling I still need to do after this. But you can see that how sharp that crease is right there. So I gotta work on that. And this is after I beat that out a lot and uh, moved it and moved it. So let's see what we're looking at here. I have no idea. I can't even hardly tell what that is. What? What the heck was that? I guess that, oh, that was the 80% repair. Once I was done, I'll notify the customer. And he said, yep, he was happy with 80%. So that's what 80% looks like. And the customer was ecstatic. He left a, a five-star review. And I mean, it was a raving five-star review. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. As always, have a great day.